What is up, you guys? Back at you with another video. And this one, we're going to be talking about beginner 3D printing stuff. Hey guys, my name is Anton. I do content on all things 3D. And if you enjoy 3D printing content or watch me make cool models, hit the sub button down below. Great content. You won't regret it. I promise you. So you just bought a 3D printer or you ordered one or it just came in and you hear these slicer, G-code, Z-offset, bed adhesion, and all of these words, and you're just a little overwhelmed. Like, you're really confused with what's going on. Don't worry. I was there too. Everyone was there too. I feel you. And this video, hopefully by the end of it, you're going to have a full comprehension of what all of those basic things mean, and you'll have enough information to feel confident to start 3D printing your own stuff today. What I think is very important is, first of all, understand all of your 3D printer parts. So we're going to go through that, what they do, why they do it, and that'll give you a better grasp on your printer and how the whole system works. And then we'll go on to the words such as slicer and all of that. So you got a printer. First of all, you have a bed plate. Now, my current model is called a Creality CR-10S Pro. It's the version 2. You could have an Ender, you could have, uh, it doesn't matter really which brand, it doesn't have to be Creality. All of them are going to have a bed plate, right? Sometimes they're heated, sometimes they're not. If it's heated, what that helps with is when it prints plastic, it's really heated up. And if this is hot, it's going to stick to this, right? And you want to have good what's called bed adhesion. Why is that? Well, as this nozzle moves up higher... It's moving left and right, and this bed is moving back and forth. The plastic is building up here. If this nozzle right here shoves it off, your print's failed. It's going to be printing in thin air. And that's why you want that. So you don't have to have a heated bed, but that's why it's a nice thing to have. And usually upper or higher end printers have them. So those, that's your bed plate. Now, we have the printer. It's got a nozzle on it. It's got a fan on it. Two fans on it. It's called a hot end. Right, so the, the nozzle is what gets really, really hot. And hot it goes, as the plastic is coming through it, it melts. Now, there's different nozzle sizes, so there's a hole in that nozzle. So usually they're really, really tiny, though, differences. 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 nozzles, 0.2 nozzles even, and you can go as big as a one millimeter nozzle. And all it does is the amount of plastic that's coming out of it is bigger or less. And depending on what you're printing, you'll want a different one. We're not going to get into too many details on that, but that's what that's for. This fan is just to help the actual nozzle uh, hot end be fine. This fan right here is really responsible. This fan duct is to cool that plastic. So this plastic is melted on here, but it gets, you want it to get harder, and you want it to get harder in time. So when it prints the next layer on top of it, it's a solid thing to print on. That's what this fan is for. So we've got that figured out. Okay. So most of the printers, at least this one, they have three axes, right? This will be important later when you get into the slicer part. You got your X axis, you got a Y axis, and you got a Z axis. Z axis is what goes up vertically. X and Y are what goes sideways and back and forth, okay? X and Y sometimes interchange, that's why I'm not showing you them. Sometimes they consider this the X axis, sometimes they consider that uh, in the three in the 3d world i should say in general but usually one or the other and you'll see in the program which one is selected z is always going to be going up and down so figured all that out what is this right here this is this tube right here if you see this goes through that dual gear extruder all the way to my roll this is called filament right now there's different types of filament this is called pla plastic because it's made out of certain materials and that's just the acronym for it pla there's ptg so that plastic is going to be more harder possibly more durable but you got to heat up your nozzle better to print it um there is tpu you may have heard of that that's flexible plastic it's more flexible than pla pla plus that's even more flexible than pla but not as flexible as tpu or ptg or anything like that there is a whole bunch of types of filaments basically but that's what that is, and that feeds down through your extruder. Now, I said dual gear. Mine has two. You'll see these gears. There's one on this side and on this side. These are what are responsible for pushing your PLA filament out here, right? And it's actually going to move it forwards and backwards. 
The reason it moves it backwards is if this is being printed and doesn't need any more pushing out and it's being lifted and it's moving around the print, you want to make sure it pulls that all out so it doesn't just, you know, pull globs all over your prints. So that's what that's for. This is a nice Capricorn tube. Sometimes this right here can get stuffed up with PLA plastic. Imagine if this keeps being pushed and then it gets stuck and jammed and then you have a major explosion mess. So that's why it's nice to have a this kind of tubing. You want it kind of nice, but you don't have to. Okay, so we got all that figured out. This here does not come in your printer. This is a camera. This camera is connected to my Raspberry. It's a Raspberry Pi. Basically a very cheap computer. It's about $35 to $40. Now, when you hear the words Octoprint, it's just the specific type of program you run on a Raspberry Pi that helps you do stuff for your 3D printer. We're not going to go crazy into it, but think of it as a smart adapter for your 3D printer so you can monitor your prints remotely. So when you first turn on your printer, you're going to be greeted with a screen. It's going to have different stuff and settings. And when you go to the print parts, this will show your SD card. This is card right here. And it's going to have some default prints. Okay. You can literally click on any of them. Now I have This is my custom one, but you'll have some sort of like a cat, maybe a benchy something, and you can hit print and your printer immediately will start printing. You don't wanna do that, okay? You don't wanna immediately start printing. What you're gonna to wanna to do, and I don't care if you have what's called auto bed leveling or not, you need to level your bed. You see these right here on the corners? They may look differently on your printers, but you have one on every corner. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure it's leveled. So here's my leveling right here. It's gonna make my go auto home, which is the same exact direction all the way to the corners keep in mind when you're installing your printer you want some room in the back it will go past where it's at okay so you need to make sure that this surface is perfectly flat and just the visual eye it won't be able to do that easily what you do is you have either a piece of paper or a small thin 0.2 millimeter uh, metal part that comes with your printer it does for creality ones and you'll put it under that nozzle every time it goes on all the different zones, right? So there's 25 zones on this, little boxes that it's split up. And it's going to measure on this printer if it's perfectly there. Now, some printers that don't have auto bed leveling, it's okay. All you do is you just keep tweaking these guys and test with your paper if the nozzle is sticking too hard to it or not. This part is very, very very important and crucial for your prints. I have had on the Discord, by the way, you guys check it out in the description below if you got questions. All the time, people have different printer issues and you can have a plethora of issues. But the problem was they didn't know how to bed level. I too didn't know how to bed level when I first got the printer. That's the first thing you wanna do. You wanna build your printer correctly and make sure it's perfectly level before you print anything at all, okay? Now I have a video instruction for this model. If you have a different one, look those up online. I'm sure there's plenty of resources. But leveling is a very, very crucial part for your prints. Once you have it leveled, then you can go into your printer right here, and usually they'll have some preset files. Hit print, and it'll print something, and you'll see if it's good or not, right? I wouldn't suggest using the PLA plastic they most of them come with. You use something higher quality, because your prints might not come out well just because of that. But make sure your print is, bed is very level. Now let's go to the slicer and cura and all those other kind of word settings. So let's, let's start with basics you're going to need a STL file to print on your bed, as you see right here. What is an STL file? It's basically a 3D file. Now you can't just drag and drop these files and your printer will print them. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But before you get to that, where can you get these STL files? The main website is called Thingiverse. As you see here, there's a plethora of files. You see it, you download it, you got your file, you can print it. Cute little Eevee, Cybertruck, Baby Yoda, a mask, all of these are 3D files that people made and are sharing for free. So you've got that done, you got your file. Now you need to translate it into what's called a G code. See this funky looking stuff right here? That's actually what your printer, how it talks and communicates. It's gonna read off of that and it tells it, oh, this is where I moved a nozzle. Now obviously you're not gonna be working with something crazy like this. What you're gonna be working with is called a program called a slicer. It's what takes your 3D file, the STL, it could be an object file, etc and makes it into a G-code, which your printer can read and print off of, okay? Slicers, there's different ones of them. There's a whole bunch of programs, but the industry standard for the most part is Cura. I highly suggest Cura if you're just starting out printing. If you have features you dislike about it, you can later on switch that, but Cura works great for all. 
when you set up Cura, you'll be greeted with what kind of printer you want you using with. And I have it set up already for mine. You don't want to go through the settings for yours and make sure you get it all set up because as you see here, this size of a printer may not work for yours. And you want to make sure that's all correct. I have a video detailing Cura settings and stuff like that. Go check it out. It could be helpful. But here we have our slicer, Cura. So now I have this nice file of Baby Yoda. It's an STL file, remember the 3D printed ones. I'm gonna drop it into my slicer program, right? Here's our Baby Yoda, and this is exactly how it came in. Now, you do not wanna print this like this. You do not. So, if you just click on this tools right here on the side and rotate it 90 degrees, there we go. For the most part, this is how you wanna print it. So you just hit slice. Again, depending on your computer, how fast or slow it is, it'll slice it faster or slower. Now, there is an incredible amount of different settings that you can go through to make sure that your 3D prints are successful. This is when it comes to 3D printing is an art. You have to learn about it because as you see here in my preview right now, this is what I'll actually print. It's gonna look like that, kind of messy looking, right? It's got this, it's not gonna be all three colors, right? But it's gonna have all these box globs and all of that. Why, why is that, why is that? Well, here you go. We'll go down to the layer settings. Layer by layer, this nozzle is going to move around here. So you can see there's my nozzle, and that's what it's actually going to be doing, right? It's gonna be going through all those lines just like that. Now, if you understand that, when you print, let's say this ear right here, you can't print this out in thin air. You need to make sure it has something to put it on. So you have supports. Now you see this weird stuff inside. Well, that's the infill, and there's different patterns. Mine is a gyroid. There's boxes, squares, triangles, hexagons, everything. This is when it comes to slicer settings. Now I have a whole video dedicated to that. Go check it out. But before you do any of that, you need to slice any sort of STL. This would do that. You'd save it as a file. It would be .g code. Literally the file will be, you know, baby .g code. And that file you can put on an SD card and any 3D printer should know what to do with it. This is how you print your own 3D files that you want to do. Not the preset ones after you made sure that everything is correctly calibrated. You got your print bed level. We know what that is now. We got good bed adhesion. The thing's not flying around. We know what that is. We got our slicer program. We made our G code. We know what SDLs are. You're good to go, right? After this, all you got to do is just get better. You got to learn your settings. You got to learn what your printer likes, what it doesn't like what kind of supports print orientation you know i could print this baby yoda upside down so the ears will be closer to the ground maybe that'll be better all of that is a whole bunch of stuff that requires a lot more time than i want to dedicate this video to but this is how you can just get started and after that you can improve on those skills and then do upgrades on your printer like uh a wham bam quieter fans and you know little 3d prints for whatever if you have an ender or something like that there's a lot of stuff you can do and as you print you'll learn of things that you want to improve on and that you're missing But for now, I would just start with this. This is enough I believe for you to be able to start today printing and understand what software you want to have installed before you get that 3d printer And you're anxious and even have the files ready for it You can slice those files right now with the 3d printer and be ready to go with it as long as you know What sort of nozzle size your printer has in the print bed? That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the sub button down below for more 3D printing content. If you enjoyed the video and helped you out in any sort of way and you learned something, smash the thumbs up. It really helps me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.